welcome everyone. We're delighted to uh, to see you all uh, here today. Um, this is going to be a really interesting talk, and we're particularly pleased that Maureen can join us. Maureen, many of us know, uh, she's a relative uh, newcomer to our, our U3A, but my goodness, she's been so dynamic and so interested and so involved. In fact, so much so that uh, uh, she joined our committee earlier this year. So we're, we're, we're delighted there. Um, she's given several um, really interesting presentations uh, to, to our group. Uh, the most popular, of which we were talking about earlier, I think is how many hits? Is, uh, 107 hits, did you say, that, uh, that, that we've had? So it's, it's <laughs> it, it, one of the most popular videos. We recorded that. Uh, it's on uh, Making Your Own Postcard, and it's there for everyone to, uh, to see. So uh, th th that inspired us. Uh, I'm sure she's going to inspire us again today uh, as we learn all about cake. So over to you, Maureen. Anyway, let them eat cake. I mean, we've always, you know, that's, I think, going right the way back to primary school, I remember somebody telling me, somebody famous had said, let them eat cake. But I got a little bit here from a book. Um, somebody's introduced me to this lovely book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse. Yes. And in, in it, it's about a boy, a mole, a fox and a horse. And in it, it's got um, the boy, or the mole, talking. I got you a delicious cake, said the mole. Did you? Yes. Where is it? I ate it, said the mole. Oh, but I got you another. Did you? Where is that one? Hmm. Same thing happened to that as well. <laughs> um, and then there's a, um, I've got another one. I've just gone, this is uh, them talking again. I've discovered something better than cake. No, you haven't, said the boy. I have, replied the mole. What is it? A hug, it lasts longer. And I think we sort of, cake is sort of one of those satisfying things, isn't it? That we turn to in celebration and in times of need, um, we eat cake. So come over the next slide, please. One. Thank you. So who said let them eat cake? So this is going to be a light-hearted, informal, short look at the history of cake eating. Was it Marie Antoinette or was it Marie Therese? Does it matter? Uh, next one. So Marie Antoinette was born in Vienna, 1755, and she was the daughter of Marie Therese. And she married Louis the 16th at the age of 14. Marie Antoinette died in Paris in 1793 at the age of 37, and she was executed by guillotine. She was the last queen in France before the French Revolution, and she is associated with the decline of moral authority of the French monarchy. And I've, I'm not going into great detail about history here, but there's all sorts of things about what she did and what she didn't do and um, how she sort of didn't follow the, I think we've got royals now that do this, that don't sort of follow the set pattern that they're supposed to do. So she was quite, quite free and easy. Um, and eventually they turned against her and she was guillotined, which ho hopefully doesn't happen now. Um, so there is quite a lot about who said it, but there are... Um, she had a reputation as an indulgent socialite and that was difficult to shake off and um, you know on it went and, and apparently she did say let them eat brioche which is a form of cake um, but there is evidence that Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote in 1767 which is before she died um, and he, he said that um, she didn't actually, she, there is no evidence of her saying it. Um, and it is possibly Marie Therese, which was her mother. Um, so I think the historians amongst you will probably get a better idea of it than that. So next slide, please. We'll come back to that one in a minute, I think, a little bit later. So when did afternoon tea begin? Because although we might have had the French saying, let them eat cake, um, the British, I think, are pretty renowned for their afternoon tea. And it's made a comeback now, really. So afternoon tea is quintessentially English. Anna, the seventh Duchess of Bedford in the early 17th century, got a bit peckish mid-afternoon. So she would order bread, butter, tea and cake. 
she'd then invite her friends around and the habit caught on. So we have this um, sort of uh, idea that the upper classes were eating cake in the afternoon and it sort of really did catch on. So we now have places like um, the Ritz and so on that then took on that this idea that this would be really quite nice thing to do. So they then started um, offering afternoon tea. I've never been to the Ritz for afternoon tea, but I know people who have. I have been to Fortnum Mason's for afternoon tea though. Somebody took me there one day. Um, and now our local hotels do, and even Marks and Spencer's do an afternoon tea. <laughs> and I think it's probably gone up a bit now. It's probably about 30 pound ahead in some of the hotels in Sidmouth, certainly for afternoon tea. And this is the sort of thing that you will get. So I think it's something that we recognize. And they'd eat that because in, in 17th century, because they didn't get dinner till about eight or nine o'clock at night and it would be a long time. So can you imagine the size these people were getting eating this mid afternoon and then going on to a full spread dinner? Next one, please, John. So the taking of tea soon spread from home into society and tea parties became the norm with tea gardens and tea rooms appearing everywhere as they are again now. I mean, how many times has a shop shut down in the high street and it opens up as a coffee shop or a tea shop? The practice faded a bit during the Edwardian period, but it's back in abundance now. And then obviously with the pandemic, we have gone back out into the tea gardens. So we've opened back out going out into tea. And then famous hotels such as the Ritz and stores like Fortnum Masons. But there's also a very famous tea room in Harrogate, Betty's Tea Rooms. Apparently they queue mile around the block for a, a seat in there. And the Harbour Hotel in Sidmouth, Deer Park, Marks and Spencers all serve afternoon tea in their cafes or restaurants. So next slide, please, John. So what is cake? This is my father my inspiration to cake. He loved cake, but we also got him to make cake because he wasn't just going to eat it. So we got him to make it. And there is a thing about what is cake. And, and I remember growing up with my mother who wasn't, she was a very good basic cook, but she was not a baker or a cake baker, but she taught me to bake cake quite early on. I think she liked it, but didn't actually want to make it. And I do remember Sunday mornings, my very first early recollection of, of Sunday mornings in the kitchen with her, were making fairy cakes or queen cakes, as I think they might have been called. And then I progressed on to making butterfly cakes, which was quite an, uh, an adventure. And then later on, when I used to do the cooking all the time, um, she used to leave a note before she went to work with things like, could you make a Swiss roll for pudding tonight, please? So that was my introduction to baking cake. So what is cake? It's a sweet food made from baked mixture of flour, eggs, sugar and fat. Bear that one in mind because that isn't always the case. Cake is a form of bread or bread like food. It's eaten all over the world and deciding whether a food should be called a bread cake or pastry can be difficult. So next slide please John. So what ingredients do we need to make a cake? Flour, sugar, eggs, butter or oil and I put in there not always. Um, liquid, usually water or milk, flavourings, dried fruit, nuts, spices, and there's quite a lot more now that people are putting into cakes and probably going back during wartime, things like carrot, courgette, beetroot were all in there to sweeten when there wasn't enough sugar. And then there's decorations of icing, buttercream, lemon drizzle, marzipan and the list again can go on. So what is the science in this? We've got our ingredients, so what's the science in it? So the flour, it usually wheat, but now it's not. We have all the gluten-free ones, the rice, soya, all those flours, potato flour. And if you actually buy ready-made, uh, a sort of bag of gluten-free baking flour, it will not just be one, one uh, flat alternative. It will be a mixture of all of those as rice flour, uh, potato flour, all of those will be mixed together 
to be able to get the, the consistency right, because that was the one thing with gluten-free people, um, with cake, they just, it just didn't work because the ingredient, the flour, wasn't, um, wasn't cake-like in consistency, but it is really good now. So it's a carbohydrate, usually white or wholemeal, but obviously we have all the other alternatives. Gluten-free go down the route of rice, corn, polenta, soya, ground almond, potato. Um, so quite a lot of variety there now. Um, raising agent, um, bicarbonate of soda, baking powder, yeast and air, which is a, a really good one. Um, and then we've got things like fruit, cherries, dried fruit, apricot, apples, plums, strawberries, gooseberries, black currants, and the list goes on. And then we can also put things in like nuts, chocolate, jam, marmalade, cream and buttercream. So it, the list goes on and I think people are just getting more and more inventive. If you go into any cake shop now or cafe, a good cafe that's serving a good range of cake, um, you will find quite a lot there. So um, next slide, I think, John, please. Right, so we've got afternoon tea and then something called high tea and we've changed the names I think with what happens in people's society you know what happens in society I mean you know people used to work eight till six or nine till five or and came in at, at five or six o'clock and cooked dinner and you know there's a lot of flexible working now but um, in times gone by afternoon tea apparently is served around 4 p.m it's never intended to replace dinner but fill the gap before dinner <laughs> sorry <laughs> afternoon tea was always the preserve of the rich you decided if that you can decide if that's true now I mean as I say how often do we go out and have maybe not a full afternoon tea but certainly you know getting near it and they're charging about 30 pound a person now I think it was usually served in low comfortable chairs or relaxing in the garden and high tea was for the workers of the newly industrialized Britain. They worked long hours and high tea was their meal when they returned from home from work. And it was usually served at a table with high back chairs. So take your pick. I think if we, I seem to remember watching quite a lot of Poirot films over the time and they're usually sitting relaxing around the tennis court, aren't they? In low back chairs, having afternoon tea. Um, and not high tea. So next slide, please. Right, so we have um, cake names. And I don't know how, there's, a, there's all sorts of ways we can do this, but um, I mean, I went through a few and there may be, I have got a quiz which has got naming thing um, cake on. So I went through a few of them that you may not be aware of. We've got things like, and this starts down here really in Devon, Chudleys, um, Russian Slice. Um, so I'm just working my way up to sort of some of the more rare ones or ones that you might not be common ones. Manx Bun Loaf, Rip and Cheese Cake, Kentish Cake, Tottenham Cake, Orkney Bruni, Duke of Cambridge Tarts, which is a very unfortunate name these days, isn't it? But there we are. Yorkshire jam cake. So they're sort of quite probably more the unusual ones. Does any, I don't really want to open the mic on, uh, open the chat on this one, um, Ian. Um, Chudleys, anybody, anybody know what a Chudley is? Or perhaps we'll put that in the quiz. Maybe I'll put that in the quiz afterwards, shall I? Um, right, next slide then, John, please. There's no evidence that there is, I said earlier, no evidence that Marie Antoinette uttered these words. It's associated with French nobility and could be interpreted in other ways. Give them cake if they cannot afford bread. Why don't they eat pastry is attributed to Marie Therese. Um, and it is still doubtful as it was written 100 years after her death. So really, I think it's up to people to make up their own minds on that one as to whether whether it is, um, you know, um, wh who said it. And actually, do we mind who said it? Because we just need permission to eat cake, I think, sometimes. It's really rather nice. Um, cake goes, I haven't got these on slides. Um, the cake goes back 
to medieval times. It appears to be eaten throughout the world in, lo in many different forms. And we can bring back recipes from all over the world. The Second World War saw a lot of innovation in cake making. Um, eggs, butter and anything else had to be imported, um, like dried fruits and bananas. So we then got carrot cake, bread pudding, wonderful way to use up um, stale bread. Um, and then Great British Bake Off. I mean, I don't watch it anymore, but I cannot imagine any more things that could go into a cake. Um, so people have very personalized cakes now. People are designing their own cakes and either making them or getting somebody to make them for them for a special occasion. And the supermarkets have also joined in the act, seizing the opportunity to make money um, from cake because, and I think there's a big row between Marks and Spencers and Liddles at the moment, isn't there? Um, about a cake that they've, they've stolen the design from it. So, um, so that's all that bit there. So uh, again, you know, who thought there'd be a war over cake? Um, so I'm just looking for my camera because I have, a, it was, I put it off as an extra slide. Oh no, I've got the original here. Hang on a moment. Um, so while we're talking about cake in all the different places, I had got this on, I did put this one up as a late slide, but never mind. I actually have got the receipt of my mother's wedding cake, which was 72 years ago tomorrow. And she paid three pounds, 18 shillings and sixpence for her cake, which weighed 13 and a quarter pounds. It was two tiers. She hired the cake stand for six shillings and the ornament. And there's a very clear note at the bottom that says ornament to be returned. And she that was 72 years ago, um, three pound, 18 shillings and six pence. I have no idea whether that's expensive, but I have a fancy it probably was. Um, if you think about the weekly wage at that time, that probably was probably a week's pay, wasn't it? I don't know, but probably was. So I don't know how you want to do this. I mean, you can just shut up the answers if you wish. Um, I've done this. I've done this quiz with a men's group, a men's uh, forum, and they looked at me and went, "A quiz?" And I said, "Well, it's quite straightforward." And they went, "Oh, all right." So they had a go, and they've got everything right. I did it with a WI, and they looked at me and said, "We can't do this. We don't know the answers," which really surprised me. And says quite a lot about who eats more cake, probably. But anyway, it did really, <laughs> it really did surprise me that the men's group got it every question right, and the WI just gave in quite early on. So we'll have a go. So a whisk sponge named after a North Italian city. Any ideas, anybody? Genoa. Yeah, Genoa. Yeah, well done. Well done. Um, a tart pudding or cake, because you can find it called all, they're slightly different, but they are all much the same ingredients. Tart pudding or cake from Derbyshire. Bake Bakewell. Buxton. Bakewell, yeah, Bakewell. 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 Yeah, if, if we've got somebody from Buxton that would know more, then I'll add to your, your better knowledge. But, um, you know, I think they may be just very, very similar, mightn't they? There seems to be in naming cakes um, much uh, same thing, but comes from a different place. All right, and but just called some, you know, where they're from. So, what fruit is used in a Schwarzwalder torta? Cherries. Sorry, say that again. Cherries. Cherries. Yep. Yeah. So, Black Forest Gatto. What colours the sponge in Black Forest Gatto? I am. Brown. Brown. I know, it's interesting, isn't it? I lived in Germany and went to the Black Forest to have Black Forest Gatto. <laughs> and it's white. Huh? Oh, is it? <laughs> our, our Black Forest Gatto is chocolate sponge yeah. with white icing with chocolate on it and cherries. Yeah? Yeah. Theirs is white sponge with chocolate icing, chocolate cream. Oh, right. Well, wow. yeah, I know. Really funny. Uh, well, actually, you can understand that because it's the Black Forest is a place, so it doesn't have to be a black cake. No. So it's, that's that's the reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's also on pastry, which we don't get it on here very often. 
it's actually got a layer of pastry at the bottom and the cake is then so they bake the pastry blind like um flaky pastry um bake it blind and then they put the sponge on top then the, the buttercream and the cherries sponge and then buttercream all over it to decorate it so um it does actually it makes it very much easier for serving it because you cut it has a pastry base so it cuts through and you don't have it all going soggy or whatever so um a cake named after an island and a wine Madeira. 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 well done yes two west country cakes but it's only two west country counties but only one cake so it's the same cake, but it's named after two different West Country counties. Dorset apple cake. Well done. And it's also called Devon apple cake, if you have it in Devon. So, <laughs> uh, but much the same recipe I found. I couldn't find anything really different. JFK said he was one of these. I think it's this, his really famous, famous Ah. line when he said ich bin ein Berliner yeah. Yeah. donut a, yeah well done a, a Berliner is a donut <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably why there was a lot of laughter in the German crowd at the time when he said ich bin ein Berliner um, <laughs> because you know that's what a Berliner is <laughs> <laughs> this fruitcake and desperate Dan would be at home here Dundee. Dundee, yeah. So, um, Dundee cake, very traditionally, um, I mean, all year round, and I've been up there all year round, but certainly Christmas we get Dundee cake, don't we? So, you know, for sale with the, so it's a fruit cake without all, like a Christmas cake, without all the um, sort of marzipan on, it just has the almonds set in the top, which is quite nice for people, I think, who don't like the marzipan or the icing, it's just too mm. much. So to have just that on the top is really quite nice. A cake fit for a queen. Victoria. Victoria sponge. That's also quite often now, though, I found called Wimbledon sponge. Mm -hmm. so they, they put um, a Victoria sponge. They then put uh, buttercream, strawberries, and, um, you know, sliced strawberries, a sponge, and then dust it with icing sugar. And it's served usually Wimbledon week. So it's called Wimbledon sponge. <laughs> the calendar girls use these to decorate their cakes. Ooh. Cherry. Cherry. Yes. <laughs> See, cake comes up in all sorts of unusual places. And a cake named after German royalty. Battenberg. Battenberg. Yeah. And I've been to Battenberg to eat Battenberg cake. <laughs> <laughs> And it's nothing like ours. It's very <laughs> soft colours. You know, we have bright, quite bright pink sponge and quite yellow sponge, don't we? And then we have, oh, we have colouring in our marzipan as well, which makes it very yellow. In Battenberg, we went to Battenberg and to have Battenberg, I went to get Battenberg cake. Um, and it was very soft colours, beautifully soft, soft pink, soft yellow and no colouring at all in the marzipan. It was just a very, very natural marzipan, no colouring at all. And much, uh, not nearly, I find it quite dry here, but it was very soft and spongy out there. I must admit, living in a country that revolves around a conditori, whose only purpose is to serve cake and tea or coffee, um, was and Sunday afternoons when I lived out there, no shops were open, and I do believe they're still not open on Sundays. Um, the only activity on a Sunday afternoon was you walk round the lake and you go and have tea and cake. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> it's so English, I couldn't believe how English a tradition that was. Mm. That mm. We don't carry on here anymore. You don't go for a walk around the lake and go and have tea and cake. Um, <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> but it, and, uh, the Conditorise was one of the only places allowed open on a Sunday. Mm. And you could go and buy cream. So you'd go up to the Conditorise and you'd walk in and you'd go in and ask for your cream. You, you'd order just cream. And you'd, they'd put it on a, a waxed cardboard tray. 
and it would come out of a machine and it would go into the and however much you wanted and they'd squish it all on they'd weigh it and then they'd wrap it up with greased paper and you'd see people carrying it home on the palm of their hand and that was to go on their cake when they got home <laughs> but that fascinated me i just you know can you imagine us doing that we get ours out of squirty tube don't we so out of a squirty tin so um and and uh, i lived in a very old city that had tremendous history and um, we had a really, really, I mean, I think it was that 300 year old conditori there. And that was the place, you, not very many Brits went. So I had German friends who took me there and you went and chose your cake from the display, <laughs> which was like half an hour job. And then <laughs> you were, um, uh, uh, a ticket with your number on, they'd put the cake on the plate and then they'd they'd put that to one side. You take your ticket, you make your order at your table, and then they'd bring your cake up. <laughs> very very grand. So I'm just looking for another bit of paper here, which brings me on to a, just a little bit here about myths on cake. I was actually a health improvement officer for a short time of my life, and. People told me the most amazing things. I thought they were joking, but they weren't really when I questioned them. And they came up with these things for me. If your cake tips over, so when you cut your cake and you put it on the plate and it tips over, all the calories fall out. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's, if it's brown, there are no calories. If you eat cake with friends, the calories don't count. <laughs> which I found really quite amazing but going back to that first one in Germany if the cake tips over the Germans or where I was in Germany had this saying that if your cake tipped over you wouldn't get married oh. which I also found quite odd I haven't got married but I think I've eaten cake that hasn't tipped over but there we are <laughs> so a little bit there a little bit of, of the myths of, of cake <laughs> Um, I don't know. I've got lots here. I mean, if anybody wants to either talk about cake or their favourite recipe, I don't know how much they check. They have changed over the years, or whether people still like their their favourite recipe is still the one they had as a child, um, or or whether you changed your your ideas. Do you eat the cake when you go out? I when I go out, I eat cake I don't make at home. I wouldn't buy mm. cake that I make at home mm. when I go out. So lemon drizzle is maybe one of my favourites, but it's so easy to make. I don't buy it when I go out. I buy mm. something that I don't make mm. at home. Mm. Um, I now have got into freezing cake because otherwise <laughs> I, living on my own, I have to eat it because it goes off. So I now cut it, open freeze it and get it out of the freezer. Mm. Mm. on your own that's the only way otherwise mm. you are eating a lot of cake <laughs> the excuse is oh it's going to go dry it's going to go off i've just made an apple cake somebody gave me a whole load of monkey apples and it has had to go in the freezer because otherwise it would also go moldy because it's quite mm. moist mm. so it's had to go in the freezer so um but it is nice because then you can choose to eat your cake and not mm. have Yes. Cake, which is makes yeah. a big difference and I think I don't know how many of us are living on our own but it is a really good one it means you can still have nice cake but you haven't got to eat mm. it mm. Day, mm. all day long because otherwise <laughs> what, you know what's going to happen to it and it's an awful waste yeah mm. yes John um, I've taken to making cakes quite recently um, I don't really, I remember my mother making cakes. My wife used to make cakes occasionally, but wasn't too keen on them. Uh, but I've taken to it like a duck to water. And I find the same trouble. I like eating cake. And the thought of, I, I like to bake at least once a week. Yeah. So what the heck do I do with it? Well, fortunately, I've got a daughter around the corner who likes cake. <laughs> and her partner who visits occasionally who like cake I have a brand of cake so I end up cooking the damn things and hardly ever have anything to eat <laughs> but the thing that intrigues me is that several of the, my cake customers are um, dairy free 
which is easy. I, I can accommodate. So everything I do is dairy free. But when we have a recipe, I, I was thinking the other day when I saw this talk coming up, I have a repertoire of, I think it's six cakes that I can, I still have to look at the recipe because my memory is terrible. Um, but the thing that amazes me is my daughter in London, who gave me a recipe for um, ginger and marmalade cake. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. It's vegan. So it ain't got no eggs. In fact, it's got so little of anything. You think, how the hell does it ever make a cake? Yeah. It sort of ends up as a sloppy batter. Yeah. It's a very nice cake. It's just like gingerbread. So, oh, okay. one. That's, the so that's, that's the vegan cake, uh, which is basically sunflower oil and water. Not much else. Flour, sugar, mm -hmm. um, lots of marmalade. Lots of brown ginger. That's the marmalade. You need to fine. you need to nip along to the Ottery Larder where they, they get all the food from supermarkets and wherever that's on its sell by date, and they just you can then take it for free. And there's a whole load online this morning. That they, they've been they said we used to get bread <laughs> and a few mouldy apples. They now get they've got a whiskey marmalade jars yeah. jars of whiskey marmalade been given to them, and, yeah. and some very posh chocolate. And, and other things. So you need yeah. to nip along there and get whiskey marmalade. That would make <laughs> oh, I, 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 I sometimes double shot it with ginger marmalade and ginger. Oh, wow. The, the, the other thing I've got is um, I do a polenta. Oh. An orange and lemon polenta cake. Um, people who are gluten free, that has been one of the biggest discoveries for them. They can yeah. have ground almond and polenta and then you can put lemon with it or orange or whatever else really but it yeah. is the most wonderful base for cake it's almost like a madeira cake it's got that same sort of yeah. but nicer yes it's got the ground almonds in it it, it makes a nice pudding with ice cream on it yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah. I know. um I've got a friend who's gluten-free and she came over with her husband one night for supper and I thought, oh, what am I going to do? And I found this wonderful recipe for an almond and a polenta lemon drizzle cake. Yes. So I only made a small one because I thought if it's not very nice, I don't want a big one. So I only made a little one and they came over and I served we had supper and then we had cake and her husband sat there and he said, I have eaten that much gluten-free cake in my life he said and none of it's any good he said but do you know this is the best i've ever eaten um, yeah it, it is that combination and if you go out now to the cake you quite often see um an almond and polenta cake yes mm. it is a really good gluten-free alternative mm. um, it freezes well it it cooks easily there's very little that goes wrong with it it's not a recipe no, it's not a, a cake that's a bit temperamental um, <laughs> well some Which... cakes can be quite temperamental in that Absolutely. Sure and you know um that's all to do with the science of cake that you have to keep the temperature the core temperature set to us you know and otherwise it won't set going mm. back to that uh, just one that i know came up with quite early on a cake without oil or without fat Mm. is really quite an unusual one because we don't although people do fat-free diet you know people if you've got gallbladder trouble and things like that you're advised on a fat-free diet or very low fat diet so um it's a gen it is um a, like a generous sponge it's a whisk sponge and you whisk it and you don't put any fat in it you just got eggs i know you've got fat from eggs but there's no extra fat so you've got just your eggs and your sugar and your flour in it and you whisk, and it's just by air. That's all that raises it is the air. And it's the sponge that you use quite often. I remember we had a dish that, that came and did that. And when, the, when it turns out, you've got a dip in it. And that was for um, putting fruit in and then putting mm -hmm. jelly on it. So a sort of jelly type thing on top of it. Um, so that is really a sweet sponge, as a, a sweet flan, as opposed to a pastry flan. Okay, so you can do a sweet pastry, but um, a cake, a sponge flan, putting fruit in it, so that's got the side bits on it to keep stop the fruit falling off. 
which is quite nice. And that you usually use a fat-free sponge for that as well. So people who may have to have a low-fat diet, it's it's really quite a nice one. Quite a good one. Anybody else got Excellent. Yes. Any other question? I mean, you've given us a sort of marvelous introduction to cakes, really. It's uh, it, it, it really excited uh, our interest and certainly whetted our appetite. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank but any yes, any any other questions? Anyone? Julia, you've got your hand up. Yes, I was just thinking, um, you know, so being on your own, rather than freezing a cake, well, you could make it in the microwave and just oh. have one egg and, uh, you know, a cake in a mug, I think yeah. is the modern idea. Oh, right. you can you can, yeah. Just make it for yourself. You can, you can buy, I know you can make your own recipe up, but you can actually, they're selling those as like presents, gifts in these shops oh, that really? help sell things. Um, you know, uh, odd things to get people to buy. So they're often, they're often, and they're quite expensive to buy the whole kit, but you can make it yourself. Yeah, you're quite right. You yeah. really do need to have um, something that colours the sponge. So it's usually chocolate powder. Yeah. You know, okay. powder because otherwise in the microwave, it doesn't brown. So it comes out a sort of same colour as it went in, really, which isn't over appetising. Yeah, but if you eat it in the mug, then you don't Ooh. see it, do you? No. Yeah. Or, you put cream on the top. or you can make it into an upside down cake in a mug so you could put your pineapple in the bottom with some brown sugar and then put your cake on top and tip it out and you it doesn't matter it's it's not changed color because you've got your, your brown sugar and your um pineapple yeah. up on the top which is quite a nice way of doing that you could do any fruit there that you know it doesn't have to be pineapple but it is quite a nice one because it stays quite firm and you've got that nice syrupy with it so um and you put a cherry in it so it really does sort of turn out quite nicely but obviously you, you need probably quite a wider mug rather than no one you know well i've made it in ordinary just you know ordinary mugs coffee yeah. mugs no problem just, yeah and yeah. it well and it only takes about a minute does it I've never well, it takes that. two and a half to three all right so, yeah. Yeah. There we one and, uh, you know, and you don't have to measure anything. A couple of t tablespoons of flour and sugar. And, and then you put in your, your flavourings and there you go. Very easy. Yeah, yeah lovely. That's very, very good. Little, very little washing up. We've got a recommendation from uh, Elizabeth here. The, uh, the coffee tea cake. An excess pavilion at, at, at a, a, a fraction, fraction of the price of uh, yeah. some of these elite uh, hotels. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, Cakes are very good. Excess pavilions were good. I mean, I don't know yeah. lockdown, but they they were very good. Yeah, In there fact, are. There the are some, yeah, there are some sort of good deals on the economy side, and if you know where you're going, uh, uh, well, have a reputation. That's good. My father's memory obviously had gone quite bad, but <laughs> when the care and I used to come into U three A meetings, I used to bring my carer and my father with me, so they could have a walk along the seafront somewhere different to go. And they'd be walking along and chatting away, and then he'd, they'd walk past the pavilions, and he'd go, "They do really nice tea and cake in there." <laughs> <laughs> so they go, "No, no, later." They go, "No." Tea and cake in there. <laughs> <laughs> and the comment from Chaz, thank you. Sundown is for vegan yeah. cakes. So if uh, anyone's looking for vegan cakes locally uh, out, Sundown is, uh, is is another recommendation. Is that in the um, Strand? That's in the Strand, I think. That's in the Strand. Yeah. That's right. Yes, they, uh, yes. They, they, they're quite enterprising. They do some quite, quite interesting things in there. Yes. Yeah. My, my, I mentioned this last week, I didn't overplug it, but you can get some terrific cakes at the Infusion Cafe. I go there for coffee primarily, uh, and this is the one up by that sort of roundabout, uh, the Four Temple winds, I think. Uh, and they all homemade, of course, and uh, all, 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 uh, all, all excellent. So uh, that's, uh, that's a recommendation from me. Uh, the other thing I ought to confess is I, I must follow in John's uh, footsteps. I, I, I've never sort of baked. My wife uh, does, but she's not well at the moment. So I've succumbed. If we're going to talk about uh, bought cakes, um, I can actually recommend from Home Bargains these, the, these, these, I was not focusing, sorry, I've got the thing on. They're, they're, they're plain Madeira slices. I'll just, um, 
I'll, I'll just change this. Uh, and, and it says what it actually uh, says. I'll just, sorry, I'm just going to uh, change my background. I'm sorry, out of focus here. Uh, I'll, I'll come out here. Um, so, that, so there they are. And, and if you're living on your own, the ingredients are really very good. Uh, they come in these individual sort of packets. All right. And what I like about Madeira, it's like, um, it's got a plain cake, but you can mix fruit and do all sorts of things with it. You know, it's really quite, uh, quite, uh, quite, quite uh, flexible. Um, and uh, we, we find that's, that, that, that's actually, you're feeling quite peckish and you haven't baked anything and you want something quick and easy and you do go for the, 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 the balls options, um, that, that's, uh, that's something we've enjoyed. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the ruling is. I mean, it, it, uh, copyright on recipes, I don't know, is really hard. Yeah. Because I was wondering whether we could just, people could send in their one favourite recipe and we put them up on online. I don't know whether you can do that. Whether that would be a big deal. It's, it's, it, it's, it's interesting. We, we certainly do that. We've got our ideas page or a separate page and connect and learn. That's dead easy to do. Um, copyright is complex. If it's genuinely your own recipe, there's clearly no problem. What's been handed down through uh, through the families over the years. Um, I, I suspect it was someone else's recipe. It's rather like poetry. You can't copy and paste it. But if you find a recipe or indeed a poem on a website, you can put the link in and there's no breach of copyright at all. So if... Be, sorry, John, that would be easier because that would hmm. then save a lot of space and a lot of time copying everything up. If people so, them, I mean, I've got um, some good recipe books here. So hmm. you can say whose recipe it is as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that, the, certainly the, the, we could look at ways in which we could uh, we, we could share that. That's certainly no problem. As I say, you've just got to be aware of people who invent something, put it in a unique place, uh, and it's technically their copyright, and then there are all sorts of problems that could emerge. Um, but but it's a great. What does everyone feel? Is that a, a useful thing for us to do? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm, okay, well, 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 we'll have a think about how we could. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 what should we call our recommended recipes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll have a think about that. Uh, and especially for if you've got recipes that either keep very well, I mean, gingerbreads and things you should keep for three days anyway, ginger cake, because it takes time to go really sticky and gooey. But, um, you know, if you have got recipes that keep well or freeze very well, because not everything freezes well. So, you know, um, that would also be quite helpful. Um, or if you've got things like, you know, John puts ginger marmalade in with his ginger cake, you know, suggestions that you can adapt recipes, maybe, mm -hmm. that you find really mm -hmm. useful um, and have worked really well. So things like that, because we can all now find quite easily, you know, if you want a recipe for a ginger cake, you can find one. But if somebody says, oh, I put ginger marmalade in mine and it makes it even ginger, more gingery, then that's really, you know, you can think, oh, I'll try that then. So uh, and, and, and that, interestingly, Maureen, that uh, gets over the copyright issues. So if you see someone else's recipe and then you tweak it and give it a different name, we're away, <laughs> yeah. you know, no problem there. <laughs> So it can be really imaginative here. <laughs> yeah, I just think with the winter coming on, I mean, I can't call you. Yeah. Know, with the winter coming on, and there are, I'm finding on my own that you do, I some afternoons I get up and think, I'm going to make a cake. Yeah. And I go out and spend mm. an hour or so in the kitchen mm. and make a cake. And, mm. you know, it's just sort of an activity to do, isn't it? Quite a nice thing to do, I think. Um, well, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll do. How about this, Maureen? Um, we've got the next newsletter coming up soon. Um, <laughs> I, I was attempting to uh, write a resume of what you've talked about, but you've covered such a wide area, I don't know how to begin to do it. So yeah. in your write -up, the write-up of your piece, should we actually put forward this recommendation uh, that uh, we all thought as a group that it'd be wonderful to share our, our own recipes or, or else, uh, if there are any favourite recipes, provide links to those recipes. Uh, and if people can then sort of send them to me as newsletter editor, we could, we, we, I think you imagine, you know, there's a sort of cake of the month, as it were, recipe. Yeah. Which include. But we could also put in um, uh, the information on our ideas page or in a separate page on Connect to Learn so that we've got it. And as you say, with 
with, with winter coming up um, and with uh, novices like, he's no longer a novice, it's John, but me, who might want to sort of experiment with, uh, um, the key words are quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, I want to experiment with uh, something that's uh, <laughs> it, 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 different. Uh, I, I think yeah. that could be real potential. That's a great idea. Yeah. I think also that we're, we aren't in restrictions anymore and we are beginning to, I mean, I'm beginning to have people around my house. Mm. And I think it would be really quite nice to offer cake when they mm. arrive to make it just that bit special again. You know, it is quite I thought you were going to suggest, a, instead of wine tasting, a cake testing. Okay. So we have a whole <laughs> range of t- ah. <laughs> You just have one little morsel of each. <laughs> when I did it at the WI, we did that. Everybody yeah. was bringing a cake. And then yeah. they were all around the room and the recipes, yeah. we hung all the recipes up. So all right. Yeah. I imagine that could be a little bit overwhelming. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> could have a cake and cheese party. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a good northern tradition there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that's very northern. Have your yes, your absolutely. Tea. My 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 wife's uh, comes from Yorkshire, and so uh, yeah. I, I've had the privilege of going to Betty's uh, in Arica, yeah. which is absolutely yeah. wonderful. I even have someone play the piano there, and it's uh, it, it is an experience as well. Uh, well worth it. But yes, that's what she does. When I first. Uh, uh, got married, she loved to sort of fruitcake and then she got these bits of cheese out. And I thought, well, where, what's that for? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's fruit, fruitcake and cheese. There we go. <laughs> it can't just be cheddar cheese, it has to be a crumbly cheese. Doesn't oh, it? Wensleydale, or Wensleydale. yes, yes, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We got to, you got to get the blending right, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, well, yeah. Yeah. so <laughs> just going back to that, talking about that, um, a Sally Lunn, does anybody know what oh. a Sally Lunn is? Well, it's a bun, isn't it? Mm. And it's it comes from Bath, where yes. yeah. one had a, yeah. a cake tea shop room. and a tea room, and yeah. she made Sally Lunns. Um, yeah. I asked a question earlier, what was a Chudley? Does anybody know what a Chudley is? No. is it, they come from Chudley, down in Devon. Is it, the uh, split, is it the split that goes with a cream cake? Yes, it's a split bun, what we used to call yeah. a cream bun. Um, but they're called chuddlers. They're slightly more doughy, I think, when I've, when I've seen them. Um, they look slightly more doughy. So I prefer um, them yeah. to a scone with a cream tea yeah. because they're lighter. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh right. Yes. yes. Oh, well. Oh, yes. well. Yeah. But you have to go somewhere that knows about them. <laughs> <laughs> chuddly. Chuddly, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think I saw them in Fields once. That's where I think I first saw them. Fields um, coffee shop in Sidmouth. In Sidmouth, yeah. I don't know what they're like up there now. They've changed hands and all sorts, but um, yeah. don't go in there anymore. But uh, that, I'm sure it was in there I saw them the first time. It was um, in, in Fields in Sidmouth. So, it's they, they used to sell them. They, they used to sell them by uh, the bakery just past St John's Church by that little roundabout. All right. A long while ago, they used to sell them in there, but they, they stopped when it changed hands, I think. Oh, Let me mention, uh, some time ago, I was asked to give a talk to two primary schools about being an evacuee. I was the second wave of evacuees where we went off with our, um, my sister and I were both under five and we went off with our mother. And I decided to take in, because I was talking about being an evacuee, I decided to take in a wartime cake for them to try. And I got my mother's uh, recipe. Oh, wow. oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Backwards. But it's good eating, suggestions for wartime dishes, two shillings. A, a new selection of Daily Telegraph readers tested recipes. And the recipe I used, I used the Christmas cake recipe sent in by Mrs. F.C. Moldworth from Cultworth Biddeford. <laughs> it used plain flour. The fat was half margarine and half lard, which makes, oh. me, makes me cringe. Sugar, mixed, mixed cake fruit, two eggs, shell or reconstituted. <laughs> A bit of milk, a little candied peel if available, a little powdered spice, optional, a pinch of ginger and a half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. And it says it keeps for two months, but the children didn't keep it for two months. <laughs> what surprised me, it was, well, with lard and margarine, it was disgusting. But, and it had far less sugar than a modern cake, but they didn't comment at all. 
I, I thought the modern child would not like this sort of uh-huh. unsweetened cake and with this awful fat in it, but they didn't didn't complain at all. And either interesting. Sort of, How interesting. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. think she had she was lucky to have two eggs sinking back. Yeah. I think yeah. we only got one a week, I remember. Or medicine. Yeah. Unless you had, you know, chickens. Yes, yes. yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of recipes, a lot of a lot of recipes. There's some very interesting ones, but I won't go. Obviously, that's enough at the moment. Well, uh, th- th- there's all sorts of scope for the newsletter here, you know, Margaret. So yeah. I think we can. Uh, <laughs> I, I can see a whole range of articles that uh, can flow from that. Thank you for that. Um, I, I've, I've just noticed the time. I think it, it's half past. So, in case uh, some have already had to go, in case others have to go, could I just um, do stay on afterwards? But I just really wanted to. Uh, uh, put forward a vote of thanks to you, Maureen, for a, a very wide-ranging yeah. discussion. Yeah. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. We've all learned a lot. We've learned a lot about history. <laughs> We've learned an enormous lot about uh, individual cakes and their names and their derivation. Uh, and crucially, you've really excited our interest in, uh, in, in rediscovering, for some of us, uh, some, some, some great cakes. And out of that has flowed a really interesting idea of whether we can share some recipes and, uh, and and follow John's wonderful example of uh, exploring a completely new interest. The age is no barrier at all. And uh, no, with... Um, we, could, we could get together and share our cake, couldn't There's we? all sorts Absolutely. of opportunity, <laughs> Maureen. So, uh, so, so thank you. For, I, I, I noticed a particular trend, really, that you seem to be travelling the world to where the cake is named after. So you could actually have a, a cake travelling group. Yes. Uh, and, and at the very yeah. least, we could share, share our photographs of us eating cakes in different locations. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you've, you've started Chudley. You started Chudley. You start very low to it. So, so, so pardon the pun, but you're giving us enormous food for thought. Uh, and uh, on behalf of all of us, I'd just like to thank you so much, Maureen, for uh, a, a very wide-ranging discussion of stimulating our interest and uh, pointing us with exciting thank way Thank you ever so much, Maureen. Thank you. I just felt it was light-hearted enough that we could just have a bit of fun with it. It was great fun. It was great fun. Thank you. We uh, we we could now do Zoom, couldn't we? Now we can start travelling, so we could come in, we could Zoom in and say, here I am. There's Yes, geography is no barrier at all. You can do an outside broadcast. So if any of you are going (laughs) going abroad, (laughs) and all you need is a Wi-Fi connection or data that's free, uh, and then you can send us your live experiences from your uh, your conditorai or, uh, or or cafe or wherever, uh, sure and, and we can see it in action. There's all sorts of opportunity, Maureen. You're right. This one here, Russian slice. I used to work in a baker's when I was 14, and that we were allowed a piece of cake with our uh, our tea break. Oh, um, that's part of your reward. Take Russian slice. Do you know what it is? Does anybody know what it is? How they make it? No, well, like, it's a bit like a marble cake, isn't it? Yeah. It's all and the lots all of the different colours. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, when they that, cut the ends off and the edges off to make the cake look neat and tidy. Yeah, they all put that together. Things, they put it all in um in a baking tin and then poured in. I don't think it was vodka, but I suppose the Russians <laughs> might pour in vodka and then ice the top. Uh. <laughs> It's wonderful. It's free. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, what are we use of uh, reusing food rather than wasting food? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh.